Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show the game between Peter Svidla and Luke Van Valley. This game was played in the Weekend Z tournament in 2005. And where is Weekend Z? It is a small town on the coast of the North Sea, in the province of North Holland of the Netherlands. In this game, Peter Svidla had white pieces and he started with e4. Lukman Valley played c5, and we have Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, knight to c6. d4 is the most popular move in this position. Peter Svidla played knight to c3. It is a black to move. e6 is a very popular move in this position. So is knight to f6 and g6. But Lukman Valley played e5. What is the purpose of this move? This move is discouraging d4. d4 still can be played, for example, but may not be the best. Pawn takes pawn, knight to d5, d6, and if bishop to g5, f6, and black is okay. In the game, Peter Svidla played bishop to c4. And now if black plays a natural move, like a knight to f6, then knight to g5 is attacking pawn on f7, and uh, there is a problem defending that square now. So in the game, Lukman Valley played bishop to e7, preventing white from playing knight to g5. d3 d6, knight to d2. What is the purpose of this move? Well, white may be playing knight to f1 and then knight to e3, taking control of d5 square. Bishop to g5, h4, attacking bishop. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, knight to f6. Peter Svidla castled kingside. Bishop to g4, attacking queen. f3 is possible. Queen to e1 was played. Bishop to e6, challenging bishop on c4. How should the white continue? Bishop to b3, bishop to g5. f4 was played. The idea is to open the file for the rook. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes bishop, and now h5. Perhaps castling was a better move. Or h6, preventing bishop to g5 later on. h5 is creating the outpost for the knight, but knight never got in there. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop to g5 and knight on f6 is pinned. Unpinning. Better move is queen to d4 check and after king to h1 knight to g4 is possible or perhaps castling or even taking pawn on c4. Knight to e7 was played. Rook to d1 attacking queen. Queen to b6 attacking pawn on b2. How to defend this pawn? Well, Peter Svidla didn't defend. Queen to g3 was played. Pawn on b2 is poisoned. If queen takes pawn on b2, that would be suicide, for example. Rook takes on f6. Pawn takes rook. Bishop takes on f6, attacking rook. If knight to g6, then bishop takes rook. But if rook goes to g8, then queen takes on e5, threatening checkmate. So in this position, knight to g6 was played. Bishop takes knight. Knight was preventing white knight from jumping to d5. 
pawn takes bishop, knight to d5, forking queen, and pawn on f6. Queen takes pawn on b2. Knight takes pawn on f6, check. King to f8. Knight takes pawn on h5. And black resigned. If rook takes knight, then queen takes knight on g6, attacking rook and threatening checkmate. If, for example, king to g8 is played, then there is two ways to continue. The quiet variation is knight to f6, but I really like this one. Rook takes on f7, and after king takes on f7, rook to d7 check, king to e8, knight to f6 check, king to f8, queen takes knight on g6, threatening checkmate. Black can still continue with queen to a1, but then king to f2. The only way to prolong the game is queen to d4 check, but then rook takes queen, and this is not fun for black to play. Let's go through some very interesting points of the game. In this position, black played first in accuracy when castling was better move. At move 14, queen to d4, check was better move. Knight to e7 was played. And then, in this position, white captured knight, and after pawn takes bishop, knight to d5. In this position, even Houdini couldn't help black to save the game. Congratulations to Peter Svidla, who played very accurately. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.